Well, it is five o'clock, so I'm going to call our meeting to order. I know that we have a quorum. We have Marcus, Trey, Jim, Roberta, and me. Welcome, Roberta. Um, and if you will uh, uh, mute your microphones. Wonderful. Welcome, everyone. I hope you're as hot as I am. Jeez, Lee Peter. Um, if we could have a uh, motion to approve our minutes of um, August 17th. Do I have such a motion? Move to approve. And a second? I can some track. Any questions, concerns, additions? Very none. All in favor, say aye. 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 Hi. Any, any opposed? Chair votes aye. Let's move on then to um, 3.1, which is a claim from Constance Oldenburg regarding damages to her basement. Chuck? <coughs> so, uh, this one has been denied, and so it's a report to you um, that it has been denied since that you can file it. Uh, basically, this was so we're back up related to a uh, huge storm, act of God, uh, so no liability on the part of the city. All right. We need a motion to file. Are there, well, let me ask first, are there any questions for Chuck? If not, could I have a motion to file? I move to move. All right, I'm gonna let whoever is taking the minutes pick that out. <laughs> I'll take the second. Okay, very good. Uh, hearing no other discussion, uh, all those in favor of the motion state aye. 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 Any opposed? Chair votes aye. Motion passes. Next, we have 3.2, which is a claim from Progressive Insurance for damages to their insured. Uh, uh, when his car was struck by a city-owned vehicle. Chuck? This is also a report of a denial that uh, we're asked, just asking that the matter be filed. Uh, the reason <laughs> this one is that the claim uh, did not meet the statutory requirements, it came in uh, late and is not actionable. Oh, interesting. Huh. All right, so then we have a, uh, uh, I would ask for a motion to file. Motion to file. And second, sir, Marcus. And Marcus second. Jim and Marcus. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor state aye. 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 Any opposed? Chair votes aye. All right. Let's go on to um, 3.3, .3, which is a resolution authorizing the appropriate city officials to execute a pilot agreement between the city and Regency JS LLC with regard to the apartment projects located at 919 Wisconsin Avenue. Chuck, do you want to take that or someone else? I, I can. Uh, so uh, quite frankly, this is pretty simple because uh, Regency approached us, said that uh, as a good neighbor, they felt that it was appropriate that they pay a payment in lieu of taxes for the services uh, that they received, despite the fact that they are non-taxable. Um, uh, we did meet with them and uh, understand how they calculated the, the pilot. But given that, you know, this is one of those that didn't come in with us necessarily having a hook on it, it was just them voluntarily choosing to uh, pay a pilot. I think it's entirely appropriate as is, and uh, we are recommending that uh, the uh, pilot be approved. Questions for Chuck? I have a question, uh, yes. Mary Lynn. Uh, Chuck, uh, I noticed in reading over the agreement that there is really no inflation factor uh, built into the pilot. Uh, I, I understand where after you know after the second year, it's going to just continue to be a flat amount. Uh, have we done any inflation uh, fact? Uh, have we figured in inflation with any of our other pilots that we've done over the year? 
We have. Um, uh, we actually did talk to them about this. You know, just sort of brought up the issue, and and they were they thought it was pretty appropriate the way they they drafted it. And you know, this is one of these that were you know again. I mean, we could ask them for it, and we did bring it up and talk about it, but uh, you know, they're sort of voluntarily jumping in and paying it. So I think we're, we're you know, <laughs> we can't look to get look a gift horse in the mouth, I guess. There you go, Roberta. Did you have a question? I have a question. Does, does, yes. Does this happen often that people voluntarily decide to pay for our services? Oh, every day. <laughs> No, not not really. I mean, it, it's it's not it's not mm. the first time it's ever ever happened. Um, but typically, when when we're getting pilots paid to us, it's because we have some kind of hook. They need something from us. We we want a pilot from them. It doesn't mean it's completely. I mean, the the housing authority is paying a pilot that is fairly uh, voluntary. There was for a while uh, an agreement that seems to have gone by the board for visit Sheboygan. To pay a pilot, um, at, you know, and that's not happening anymore. It sounds like, um, but uh, you know, they, they do, they do occasionally approach us. Perfect. Thank you. And we note that unfortunately, pilots do not necessarily put us very far ahead of the game financially. Is that correct, Chuck? That's true. Um, in in this particular case, I think the numbers reflect at least early on. Uh, probably about what we might see on the city side if it were taxed. Obviously, as Alderman Boren has pointed out, you know, there's not the inflationary or the, you know, increase in, in taxes factor. So it's not always going to be there. But um, it did start at, you know, reasonably close to what we might have expected to see if this were a taxable building. Good. And of course, this reduces. Um, our levy ability, or our levy, not limit, levy rate? It, it does have an impact because it, it goes into that calculation. Yeah. yeah. So no good deed goes unpunished is kind of what we're looking at. So do we have a motion to authorize the pilot agreement with Regency Apartments? So move, Warren. Second, Marcus. All right, we have a motion and second. Is there any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor state aye. 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 Any opposed? Chair votes aye. All right. Let me get my agenda back up here. Um, all right. Uh, so 3.4 is a resolution authorizing uh, the uh, execution of an updated agreement between the city of Sheboygan and the village of Kohler for the operation of the Municipal courts. Chuck, is that yours? I can. I don't know. Is, is Judge Tory on the line? She, uh, she was. Yes, I am. Oh, if, if there's anything you'd like. Caller zero one. I think. Go ahead. Uh, thank you. So, we have had a contract in place ever since the court was created, um, which was. Uh, First in 2005, and the court was created uh, to be established in 2006. And the contract um, called to be updated or at least reviewed every two years, and that has not happened until this past year. So the the new proposal then updates some of the language. It reflects software that we actually use, but then and more importantly, we took out. Um, the way that the fee that Kohler would pay was calculated. Instead of um, taking into account all of the forfeitures that were paid um, from both Sheboygan and Kohler and then subtracting those from the, the court costs and then applying a percentage, there would be now a flat rate. So Kohler would pay $5,000 um, as well as the $33 uh, per citation amount that, that we retain. And so it just makes it um, more manageable in terms of Kohler knows exactly what they're going to pay out of their pocket um, every year. And, and it takes a, a lot of the um, pressure off of finance to hurry up and get some, some numbers calculated, which can take a while um, to get done each year. So it's, it would be a flat amount and it would be more fair 
um, because Kohler wouldn't pay depending upon how well or how much forfeiture Sheboygan collected. And so that was approved um, by Kohler last month at their village board meeting, okay. is my understanding. Good. That was my question. Uh, Chuck, is there anything you'd like to add? No, I think Chuck's pretty covered, covered everything. You know, it, we, we look at a number of different factors and uh, finds the fairness issue that, that she's talked about. Uh, you know, it, there was some expense every year to the finance department trying to make these calculations, and we'll save that as well. Very good. Questions or comments from committee members? Bert? Um, this is Bert. Um, do we have a built-in, we visit this every two years or not? Well, now now we will because I'm aware of it. So it was just a matter of, um, okay. you know, citywide we're trying to do better at finding contracts and then keeping track of them. And so this was one that's now found. And um, I do expect, yes, that every every two years or now it would be a year and a half from now, I would start looking at it and making sure that it was appropriate. Perfect, thank you. Madam Chair, I have a question. Yes, go ahead. Uh, thank you. Um, what was the amount that uh, Kohler was paying in the past in, in terms of real dollars? It varied. So one thing that, that's not captured clearly right now is we retain $33 in court costs for every citation um, that, that Kohler issues and then the defendant pays. So that, when it comes in, is just put in as a court um, a collection or a revenue. Last year, that amount was was somewhere around 15000 But the, the amount that they bill, were billed um, to pay in addition to that was like 1600 And the reason that that was so – and pre, previous years, it, it would range anywhere from – uh, you know, 5,500, um, 3,000, 1,600, and it always fluctuated because the amount of revenues for both Sheboygan and Kohler were subtracted from the court cost, and then 10% was applied. So they would pay 10% of what was left. So then you could have a scenario where if Sheboygan had a great year of revenue um, collection, then of forfeiture collection, Kohler could have paid nothing for that amount. And and so it just didn't really make sense um, the way that it was set up. So now this will be a set amount that everyone, you know, can can know, okay, this is what you can budget for, this is what we can expect to receive. So then we won't have delays where a uh, bill isn't being issued. So I had this, I believe it was for 2018, where the bill wasn't sent in time. So then technically we received nothing for that whole calendar year because it didn't come out until like April. So we won't have any issues like that. Fantastic, thank you for the story. Other questions, comments? Well, excellent that this has gotten taken care of. So we need a motion to approve the agreement. Move to approve. Second. All right, we have a motion and second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor state aye. 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 Any opposed? Chair votes aye. Thank you, Judge Tory. Thank you. Thank you. All right. My toggle back and forth is never <laughs> as fast as I would like. 4.1 uh, and 4.2 are second quarter benchmarks. Uh, 4.1 is from Information Technology. And Eric, are you in the chamber or? Yes, there you are. Thank you. Okay, for uh, Information Technology's second quarter year to date, the average close time of critical or high tickets was at 2.85, with 95% of those being closed within five days. The maintained core server network current firmware at the current level or one release back is at 99%. Under workload, percentage of computers installed with FortiGate client is 100%. Number of legacy applications retired is one. That was the fuel usage application off the AS400. Number of security mm -hmm. audits performed zero 
we do have one scheduled for uh, October of this year, and system availability was at 99%. Are there any questions? I have a couple questions related to the, your department, Eric Alderman Bourne. Uh, Eric, uh, at the end of the year, we had several of the city computers that were still running the old Windows 7. And uh, I guess one of the goals was to get all of the city computers running Windows 10. Has that been completed? Uh, great question. And actually, as of last Friday, August 21st, all the uh, computers, with the exception of the, the police squad uh, MDCs, have been converted to Windows 10. We made a decision on the squads to finish out the year on, under Windows 7. We have a capital improvements uh, 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 project for 2021 to replace all these squads. I believe that's around $75,000 to replace those on mobile data computers. The reason uh, we pulled back on that is we had spent 40, 50 hours trying to get those uh, mobile data units to work and we're running into problems with the drivers. They're a very specialized uh, piece of hardware. Um, so we worked with the PD and, and came to the conclusion that rather than throwing more time at this, we would just wait, wait until 2021. That's good news. I have, I have one more question, Eric. <clears throat> uh, is there, a, is there a new update coming out on, the, uh, on, our, on our Munis uh, software? And then in, as part of that question, are we using, are, have we been keeping up on recent Munis updates or are we behind on that? We are, we are behind on the Munis updates. Uh, one of the projects that we're looking at and Todd uh, has been working with us on is when are we going to upgrade to the next level of Munis? And we are shooting for, at this time, sometime uh, probably late of the uh, third quarter of 2021. Um, we did upgrade two Prod, uh, products that are from uh, Tyler. One was the Tyler Content Management System. Uh, we upgraded that earlier this year to the latest release. And also the ticketing system, uh, Tyler Incident Management System, we are in the process of upgrading right now. So we are, I, I believe the last okay. time we upgraded, Jim, was um, back in 2017 or 18. I see. So, uh, so what you're saying then, hopefully by the third quarter of next year, that we'll be using uh, all the departments will be uh, up to date in using the, the the latest update with Munis. Yes, the departments that uh, use Munis would be using the latest versions of of Munis. The plan going forward then is also to. Um, get a better cadence so we're, we're not waiting two or three years to upgrade. We would look at um, upgrading anywhere from every six months to uh, a year. Thanks for the information. You're welcome. Um, I guess I would uh, call on Todd if you're still in the chamber. Any comments you want to make with respect to... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't let a meeting go by without you getting a chance to chime in. Um, anything that you want to uh, add with respect to our transition from Munis? Sure. Uh, thank you, Chair. One of the things that uh, we've started is that we are identifying our super users uh, throughout the city in all departments. And Eric and his team will be working with them to help us with the Munis uh, transition. Uh, this project is, you know, even though we, we have about a year and a half before uh, this version is supposedly shut off, we have a lot of work ahead of us. So right now uh, we are working with DPW and getting off of the AS400, and that is kind of our, our walking steps in getting, uh, getting things ready and prepared for the transition in, on Munis, uh, the, the updates. So we're getting all of the different departments together as far as what's on AS400 as an example, and we're also going to be looking at uh, the transition uh, to the upgrades on Munis, and finance is also one of them that's going to be uh, heavily affected. So we're trying to de determine 
um, how that's going to affect us and get the resources in place. Thank you. All right. If there aren't any other questions, we will go on to, hang on, uh, 4.2, uh, WSCS Cable TV. Eric, you want to take that away? Yes, thank you. So once again, this is uh, reporting through the end of the second quarter. Um, for the number of programs produced, we're at 314 with a goal of 500. The number of public service announcements produced, we're at six with a goal of nine for the year. Um, uh, uh, the number of televised common council and committee of the whole meetings, uh, we successfully broadcast 18. We had technical problems with one of those meetings. I believe it was the March 2nd meeting where we had sound and some uh, video issues, um, which we learned more things from and continue to improve on that. So uh, under effectiveness, on-demand viewing was at 2,173 views. On-demand unique visitors was at 1,909. And the number of film awards won this year is at eight. Any questions? Does anyone have any questions for Eric on the TV station? Chair? Uh, Todd, go ahead. Thank you. Um, I just want to kind of uh, toot Eric's horn a little bit and, so, and just point out that their team has done a fantastic job, in my opinion. Um, if we look at the technology that we had to roll out this year and the, the activity and the, the level of uh, complexity, I think that uh, the IT team has done a great job, whether it's rolling out uh, you know, laptops and, and troubleshooting things because we, we've gone through um, you know, months of people working from home and introducing Zoom meetings and team meetings. And uh, I, just, I think that everybody needs to realize that there's a high level of, of professionalism that they've um, produced in the last, I mean, it, they're just getting better and better year over year. So even the W, um, just even the, the format of the WSCS, we've, we've had our little hiccups, but nothing like we did years ago. Thank you. And, and Any I, questions or comments for Eric and Todd? I would just like to add one more comment. I'd like to thank uh, Scott Mila for uh, the WSCS program director. He's done a fantastic job in stepping up to the plate and broadcasting all the committee meetings that we have. So thank you, Scott. You're here. So um, if there are no other questions, I think we are ready to adjourn. Our next meeting is September 14th. Do we have any quorum issues? Of course not, because we're all here all the time. <laughs> Why would anyone be missing a meeting? Uh, <laughs> I would ask for a motion to adjourn. Move to adjourn. Second. And a, all right. Uh, all in favor, state aye. 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 None opposed, chair both side. We are adjourned. Thank you all. Good meeting. Appreciate it.